Hey friend, welcome back to the VIP Financial Ed channel. My name is Matthew Pilmore. I'm the president of a company called VIP Financial Education, and we help people borrow and bank properly in order to get further faster with their finances. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't done so already, consider subscribing. We do have contests going all the way through October, and today we are picking our very first winner of a $25 Amazon gift card. So looking forward to uh, potentially giving you one of these over the course of the coming weeks. Before I announce the winner of this, let's dive into today's topic, which is your debt to income ratio. Debt to income ratios are factored based on an evaluation and underwriting of how much of your current income is used to service the balances on your debts. And there are two different numbers that are generally being considered. The number that they're going to be using for your income is usually going to be looked at through your adjusted gross that's calculated on your tax returns. Most banks that provide us access to different tools are looking at anywhere between one to as many as three of our most recent tax returns. The latest two debt weapons that I applied for and was approved required two years each. Inside those two years tax returns, what they're looking at are the adjusted gross income levels. They're adding them together and then averaging them out over the time of the number of tax returns that they've requested. So if they ask for two years worth of tax returns, we're looking at a two year average. Adjusted gross income is based on how much you're actually paying taxes on. So if for instance, you were earning $10,000 per month on average or $120,000 per year, and you had roughly $2,000 per month in business-related write-offs, tax-deductible expenses, that would bring your adjusted gross income down to roughly $8,000. So that's how your adjusted gross income is calculated. If you're using adjusted income amounts that are very, very low in order to apply for some of our most popular debt weapons, you may run into underwriting complications and this is for those business owners out there that are trying to write off almost absolutely everything that they earn, which is a strategy that's often taught and encouraged. At this particular point in my roadmap, I am a lot less interested in saving in taxes and a lot more interested in gaining access to tools which open up significantly more opportunities. I can earn far more by paying taxes and using debt weapons the right way versus avoiding taxes, which leads me to being unable to get access to some of the most popular debt weapons I would have otherwise had. So let's talk about the debt servicing ratio, otherwise known as the debt to income ratio. There are two different numbers that banks will oftentimes consider. They will look at what is known as the total debt servicing ratio or the total DTI versus the gross debt servicing ratio or the gross DTI. Now the gross debt servicing ratio is based on how much the impact of the new subject loan is going to impact your overall income level. In order to calculate that, you would generally wanna base your predictions on a 28% maximum, which means that if I had a $10,000 adjusted gross income, the maximum minimum payment each month on the new debt or the new subject loan would be $2,800. If that is then factored into my total debt servicing ratio or the total debt to income ratio, they will then be importing all of the debt servicing minimum payment costs from all other loans that are showing up on your personal credit report. So let's think about that for a minute. Normally that maximum of the aggregated total debt servicing ratio or debt to income ratio is going to be somewhere around the 43% mark, which means that all combined, the subject loan, in addition to all of the other loans that you're currently paying minimum payments for, have to remain below 43% or $4,300. In this case, if you're taking home an adjusted gross of 10,000 per month. So $4,300 would be the absolute total that you would be able to pay out in minimum payment obligations, which means that you using debt weapons to your advantage can actually free up additional income or debt servicing availability, which means that let's say I had $1,000 a month in minimum payment obligations going toward an automobile and two credit cards. And I was able to take from a, say, business debt weapon, say a business credit card, one of the business lines of credit that I just got last week, and I paid off that auto loan and those credit card balances in full, it would actually hide those totals on my from my credit report. Those do not actually report to my personal credit report, which means that that $1,000 of minimum payments is hidden from view. Now there is a specific reason that debt servicing totals exist. It's because your likelihood of repayment becomes rapidly diminished the higher above a 43% total 
or a 28% gross, you get. The banks have quantified this statistically over millions of different clients. And that's why it's such a uniform number. There are certain variations to it. There are exceptions based on niche products or programs that are offered through various institutions or even private money lenders. So 43% as a total or 28% as a gross is not necessarily suggested as an absolute blanket certainty. There are variations and exceptions to those rules that you can consider. But again, the higher you get above that percentage, the harder it's going to be for you to repay your loans. And that's why it's so important to go into every single borrowing situation, keeping that in mind so that you can remain as safe as a borrower as possible. Because the entire intention of us borrowing money is to rapidly pay it off and be left with just that free and clear asset. So let's get to the funnest part of today's conversation, which is the $25 Amazon gift card winner. All right, so now let's get to the most fun portion of today's training, which is the announcement for the $25 Amazon gift card. For this portion of today's video, I'm gonna hand it over to Matthew. Matthew, take it away, buddy. Oh, ready? Oh, okay, sorry guys, <laughs> just sitting here studying. Um, so yeah. Apparently, uh, we're ready for the giveaway. Guys, I am so, so honored to be the one that gets to do this today. So the lucky winner of the very first inaugural Amazon gift card goes to Amanda Holmes. Congratulations, my friend. Amanda Holmes, apparently a relatively new subscriber to the channel, been watching us now for a short period of time and is already describing some of the success that she's having. Amanda is um, applying some of the plugged leaks portion of this into her budget and apparently is already saving money while still preserving her lifestyle. That's a big deal. Also is starting to eliminate her balances very quickly. Guys, that's what this channel is all about. So we love hearing those success stories. Amanda, congratulations. So, so pleased for you. Please email contact us at vipfinancialeducation.com with your preferred mailing address and we'll pop that bad boy in the mail and help jumpstart that cash flow maximization plan that you've already started. Guys, we really appreciate you. I'd love to be sending you a $25 gift card next. So in order to remain eligible, we're going to be doing this for the next six months. That's one a week for six months. Your chances of winning are terrific. In order to do that, you've gotta be placing comments in every single video. So make sure you drop a comment in this video. Curious to know more about what it is you're learning from the channel, what it is you expect will be applied into your circumstances moving forward. Make sure you drop a like. And most importantly, you've gotta be a subscriber. So we are unable to pay out to anybody that's not currently a subscriber to the channel, which also means being a part of the notification squad. So hit that bell notification the moment you press that subscribe button and it will alert you every time new videos are announced so that you can't miss your chance to be the next champion. We've got two other contests that are running right now as well. One involves two hour one-on-one -on -one sessions with me over Skype. We're giving one of those away each month. And secondly, we're gonna be giving away a grand prize in October where I'm gonna put you guys on a round trip flight to Denver. We're gonna hang out for the afternoon, have a blast and actually sit down and start deep diving into your circumstances and financial strategy. So this couldn't be any more exciting for me. I'm thrilled. And Amanda, again, congratulations. We look forward to seeing all of you guys on the next video. Until then, make it a great day and take care.